Hi guys and welcome back to my channel, I'm Peter. For a very long time I've been focusing on tuning, slugs and different liners, but in this one I think it's time to get a little more practical. Even though it's not legal to hunt with a 177 here in Denmark, uh, I know that many of you still do it around the world, so that kind of got me a little bit curious. So in this one I'll see how uh, slugs perform in a bar of clay at different distances. The slugs that I'll be using for this one are the 16 grainers from San and the 20 grainers from H&N. Both extremely accurate slugs and definitely my go-to slugs of all the slugs that you can ever imagine. I'll be testing them at three different distances. 30 meters or 33 yards. 60 meters or just short of 66 yards and 91 uh, meters or 100 yards. What I'll be measuring is how deep the slug penetrates the bar of clay and how big a cavity it leaves and of course how much the slug expands. As for the tuning part of this video, I'm actually pretty lucky because I'm shooting the 20 grainers at around uh, 890 feet per second, but the 16 grainers from San uh, likes higher velocity, so I'll be shooting them at close to 970. So this actually means that the adjustment uh, on the gun is very, very easy when I'm to switch between uh, these two slugs. Actually, just like one or two clicks on the power wheel and of course a little adjustment on the optics. But let's start out at 30 meters in my private um, range uh, back home. It is time to start shooting at the first distance, 30 meters or 33 yards. I'm starting out with the H&Ms and please notice that for the first time for a very very long time I have installed my scope cam so please at least just pretend that you're as excited as I am for, for this setup. I've also in, um, put up a camera uh, next to the clay bar for some crispy close-ups. But let's get ready to send the first shot. It's just back to being a, a kid again when shooting like this. I just love shooting at clay, it's so much fun, but let's take a look at what the slug did to the bar of clay. It penetrated the bar with uh, 17 centimeters and it left a cavity of just around 4 centimeters. And if we were to take a closer look at the slug, this one, you can see that the slug expanded from its original size to 7.52 millimeters. And here you can see the slug next to a new one. Next up are the 16 grainers from San. And switching the tune from the, um, the H&Ns to, to the Sands was so easy. I mean, it was um, less than 10 shots and actually what cost me uh, the most work was uh, the optics. So what I actually did was just uh, turning down the power wheel by two clicks and I had my velocity there. So very, very easy, but yeah. Let's, uh, let's uh, set up and turn on all the, the cameras and, and send it. That was a bit of a different uh, result with the sands. The penetration was around uh, 8 or 9 centimeters. It's difficult to see because the clay expanded like backwards. So I would say between uh, 8 and 9 centimeters. It left a cavity of around uh, five and a half centimeters, so it seems like it's dumping the energy a bit faster, uh, or uh, yeah, a bit faster than the the H&Ns did. 
if that's because of the higher velocity or because the lead is uh, is different, uh, maybe softer, I don't know. But if you have a take on it, you're very welcome to leave a comment about it in the comment section below. Taking a look at the slug itself, uh, it it looks like this. I don't know if you can see it, but otherwise you can you can see it up here. Um, it did uh, split into uh, two pieces, where uh, the H and N uh, remained in uh, in one piece. Okay, I'm back at the forest range where I've set up the target at 60 meters or just short of 66 yards. I'll continue where I left yesterday with the 16 grainers from San. <laughs> okay, I just want to show you my funky setup here and how I'm actually measuring the, the clay. The reason for the clay being at, uh, at this chair is because uh, the range is, is sloping just a little bit down here. So that means that if I was to place it uh, on the ground, I couldn't see it from, uh, from my bench. So that's uh, why I had to, to kneel at the table and, and use the, the chair right here. But here you can see the hole in the clay. <laughs> Pretty good. And <clears throat> okay, what I'm, I'm doing now is to place it like this and take a, uh, a small um, metal string and just carve through the clay like this and hopefully <coughs> there you can see the, the cavity and the penetration right there. Maybe I should just carve off uh, a little layer to get down to the slug there. <clears throat> so, looks like that. So, time to, to measure. I will take some, some pictures as well. But it, if I'm to, um, yeah, you can, you can look at, the, at how it, uh, it expands to, towards the, um, the shooting direction. <laughs> yeah, like this. Um, but I'll try to measure it. And it seems like it's, yeah about eight and a half centimeters, so roughly the same uh, penetration as, um, as I found on, um, on 30 meters. The cavity left is like just past uh, four and a half centimeters, so yeah, also pretty much the same. Taking a look at the slug, it, um, it folded um, much nicer in, on this distance, so maybe the the force does have uh, something to do with uh, how, uh, how it reacts when it uh, hits the clay. <clears throat> okay, I retuned the gun to the, uh, the 20 grainers from H&N. Uh, That was a bit low. I'll see if it works. The slug penetrated the clay with 14 centimeters. It left a cavity of around six centimeters, but because the shot was so low, I'm not sure that the clay expanded freely. The expansion of the slug was exactly the same as it was on 30 meters, so 7.52 centimeters. And here you can see the slug next to a new one. The target's been moved to uh, 100 yards or yeah, 90 meters. So now tension is a, a bit on because it's not that big a target to hit uh, on a distance like that. But anyway, I've um, still uh, set the gun up for the 20 grainers from H&N.
That was a pretty, pretty good hit. <laughs> okay, let's see if we can find this lock. It's a pretty sweet hole right there. It's even deeper than this. I think I can see this lock right here. There. No. Another layer. Oh. It's really, really deep in there. Wow, <laughs> right at the very end, it almost penetrated the, the whole bar. The slug penetrated the clay with 14 centimeters and it left a cavity of just around five. The expansion of the slug was almost the same as it has been on 30 and 60 meters with an expansion to 7.12 millimeters. Very impressive. And once again, here you can see the slug next to a new slug. Okay, last slug here at uh, 90 meters or 100 yards. I hope that it will hit as well as the others has done. And it did. Beautiful. Okay. Last target of the day. Pretty excited about this. Left a pretty good entrance hole right there. But let's carve it up. <clears throat> Need to dig a bit deeper to, to find the slug. I think I got it right there. Yeah. So, that's how it looks. Slugs right there. Didn't penetrate as, as deep as the, um, as the training granules, but let's measure it up. It is actually just around nine and a half centimeters and the cavity is, yeah, just short of uh, four centimeters. And the slug, right here. I don't know if, if you can see it. That's a beautiful little one right there. And it expanded to just over nine millimeters. And once again, you can see it here next to a new slug. Let's take a closer look at the numbers and starting with penetration. We can see that the heavier slug penetrates deeper than the lighter slugs. And in terms of a hunting situation, this means that the heavier slug is more likely to pass directly through a prey. We can't really compare this test on a bar of clay with an animal because they are two very different things. Speaking about cavity, in this test it's much the same. The cavity when hunting an animal is important for a clean and ethical kill. Looking at the expansion, there is only one that stands out and that's the 16 grainers from sand at close distance. And this is the only slug that fragmentized. The rest of the slugs remained in one piece. The H&Ns expanded to almost the same size on all distances, whereas the sands expanded a bit more. I've also included the velocity. The first number is at the muzzle and the last number is at the target. So with these numbers, you can also calculate the power of the slug upon impact. And guys, that's about it for this test. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. So until next time, take care and shoot safe.